Well, here we go. Here we go. The part one of uh, of a multi-part series of me installing a large fuel tank in a Challenger 2. I'll have a description at the bottom as to you know where all the parts came from. But sit back and enjoy. Thanks for watching. Uh, now, what I'm going to be doing is uh, uh, doing some preliminary fitting of the fuel tank and. Um, uh, probably riveting in a few brackets, that kind of stuff, and uh, and getting that going. So, um, yeah, uh, now to work on the fuel tank. Um, I'll, I'll go as far as I can, which isn't that far, because uh, I'm still waiting for a couple of parts. Uh, but, um, yeah, so not sure how long this episode will be. It uh, might be short, might be long, don't know. Uh, either way, enjoy, and um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in a little while. Or we'll talk to you in a little while. I'm going to speed this part up so it makes me look like I'm working really, really, really fast. Well, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, warp speed. This is the first time I've tried to fit this fuel tank inside here. And a bit of a struggle at first. Then I figured out how to do it after several times. Because you are going to install or insert and remove that fuel tank dozens of times now what you see here as I'm I've got this little piece of metal this little um, bracket piece which there we go freeze that right there you notice uh, that came with the uh, the fuel tank kit notice the edges are rounded when you get it it's uh, it's very sharp very pointy it was cut on a uh, well a metal cutter of uh, some sort um, and uh, yeah, you need to do yourselves a favor and uh, round off all those corners and take a file and round off the edges and sand it down with sandpaper. It's aluminum, so it's very soft. It's easy to work with. And, um, yeah, you need to do that in order to um, ensure you don't cut yourselves or have sharp edges in your aircraft. Uh, now, right there, freeze again. Yes, that's the right angle drill uh, attachment. Invaluable in the installation of uh, of this. I got that from Aircraft Spruce and uh, I, I drilled the first hole with a regular drill bit and realized that's nah, just not going to work so I had to put that right angle bit on there in order to get in there and as soon as I started drilling into the Longeron with that bracket yeah you could not do it with a regular drill so if you are buying this fuel tank buy or borrow one of those right angle drill attachments and of course uh, it comes with the uh, uh, set of bits from aircraft spruce and the one that I'm using is a number 30 uh, which is of course the right size of a drill bit for that and oh, there you go I was I, I just went right over past that what you witnessed there was me deburring the holes also deburr the holes deburr the holes when you drill them sand the things edges till it's you know, uh, smooth as uh, as uh, uh, well, smooth as a uh, glass or whatever you want to call it. I'm doing this all in one shot. I'm not uh, cutting this narration do down. So I'm going to see if I can do it in in one big uh, go without messing up. And there we go. I just drove drove my first rivet into that and um, added a Clico and uh, lined it up. Now I drilled the first hole into the cross tube between the Longerons and uh, just one hole into it and then I lined up the uh, the um, uh, bracket and yeah there we go. It's, and now I've driven in some rivets, just the standard rivets. The kit comes with a, a baggie full of rivets of uh, various lengths, uh, uh, steel rivets and aluminum rivets, and uh, I've used uh, quite a few of those rivets. But there's, uh, the, I, I changed some to the uh, uh, cherry rivets that are uh, flush, and I'll describe why later on in this video. But here I go again, um, drilling more holes and clecoing and drilling and clecoing and then. Uh, and then riveting. There's that right angle attachment again, and uh, making those holes. It it was a a, a great tool to work with. Um, yeah, you need one. Okay, uh, where are we in this video here? Oh, more drilling, more riveting, and oh, transition. Look at that. Was not smooth. Didn't you like that, guys? <laughs> Remember, I'm doing this all with one camera. I don't have multiple cameras. Actually, that's not true. I do have a second camera, but it 
uh, it's a different brand and it is the one that uh, chews batteries really quick I get maybe 30 minutes recording time on it and the video quality is supposed to be better but it's not this is a cheap one that I bought overseas yeah from that place and uh, I bought that several years ago and it does 1080p but amazingly enough the battery lasts for about 90 minutes so I keep using this camera I keep going back to it uh, the color looks different than the uh, the the newer one that I bought and um, so I don't use that other camera you know oh there we go that piece of cardboard yes do yourself a favor when you get the tank, if you order one of these tanks, take a piece of really stiff cardboard, trace out the bottom, and cut the holes, and use that as a template because those aluminum angles, and I keep calling it angle iron, sorry, but those aluminum angles, uh, if, if you didn't have that, you would have no way of knowing exactly where to mount these things and, and so on. So, uh, yeah, you need a template. So use a piece of cardboard and cut it out to as close as possible to the exact size. You won't get precise, but you'll get really, really close. And uh, remember, when you put these angles in, uh, don't put them in tight to the tank. Uh, you want a little bit of slop or a little bit of play in there. If you put it in really tight, that won't be good. So there we go. Now I'm drilling the holes in the rear, uh, which takes only one rivet. Um, drilling holes, and I'm uh, putting a Clico in there. And uh, once I do that, I would be, I'll be able to move those pieces at the front, swing them back and forth because they're on a single rivet. And I'll be putting the tank back in. And when I put the tank back in and swing those angle aluminums into it, uh, I'll find that it's almost impossible to find a place to mark it. It's, it's a struggle. Now, I'm doing this with the engine mounted, so I wanted to see if I could. It can be done. If all I was going to do is mount a fuel tank for a larger size and plumb it and all that sort of stuff, uh, yeah, you wouldn't have to remove the engine at all if, if you're just going from the tank straight into your fuel pump and nothing in between but I did some stuff that well you'll see in a later episode uh, that uh, really enhanced the Challenger 2 uh, with the fuel system and um, so yeah but it can be done with the engine still mounted however if you can remove your engine it will make it easier to install and if you're going to be removing the engine for for an annual or for a uh, 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 a rebuild or for decarboning or whatever you're going to be doing with it, uh, and you're thinking of the fuel tank, that'd be the perfect time to do this because without that engine in there, you got a lot more space to work with up from the backside. Not that you really need it. Like I say, you can do it without removing the engine. And there we go, drilling some more holes, putting in some more clecos, and there we go. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm deburring the holes again. Got my little deburring tool. There we go. Uh, and back in with the Clecos and back in with the riveter. And it's just a hand riveter. And uh, one of the things I didn't show, and I think you might notice the drill drill bit on the end of the drill is not a drill bit. That's a countersink uh, countersink tool for the for that. And what I did was I, well, okay. I'll be telling you what I did right here. Uh. The uh, mount is in for the extra large fuel tank. That's a 17 US gallon tank. These cross pieces here, these two cross pieces in, and these angle irons. Now these, uh, these aluminum angle, one inch angle is to basically keep the tank in and, and you have to, as you probably saw, fit it and remove it a few times. Um, I used countersunk rivets at the front because the tank will be sitting on these. I didn't want a domed rivet because over time it'll rub and wear its way into the aluminum so I wanted it nice and flush. Uh, I'm going to be putting a very thin, uh, you can buy this weather stripping, this, uh, this uh, black foam weather stripping, one eighth inch thick, very thin stuff. I'm going to line this with that weather stripping as well. Um, just to make sure that there's no metal on metal rubbing that could cause a wear on the aluminum fuel tank. Uh, I'm going to fit it again, see how it fits. The hardest rivets are, of course, the ones in the back here. There's one rivet each on those tubes. 
boy, that's, that's tough to get at uh, because you have to get it from where the engine is, and I still have my engine mounted. Now, if I removed the engine on this Challenger 2, it would have been a lot easier to rivet those two in. But my engine's in place. I wanted to see if it can be done, and it can be done. So if you buy one of these 17-gallon fuel tanks, um, hopefully this will help you uh, decide um, you know, whether you can install it yourself, which you, you can. Basic hand drills. I've used nothing special here. Uh, a hand riveter and a drill with the, the proper drill bits. So, uh, there's a few more things to put on, uh, or fit, I should say. I need to fit, there's a bar that goes across back here to the top of the tank, uh, and that is supposed to hold the tank down. And it goes on this bar here. Um, so I'm going to fit the tank in here, figure out where that bar goes, drill the holes, and get it ready for mounting as well. Okay, we're back. Um, when I ordered the tank, I ordered it with the, uh, the, the sump. Um, I think he supplies it with it anyways. I'm not sure. Anyways, I asked him about it, and, and so that's what this is. This is uh, the bottom of the tank, and if there ever is water inside, it'll collect into here, and then I've got, I'm going to be putting on a tube with the uh, little Clark valve. I think that's what it's called, a little valve that you sump the tank with, check for water. This is the fuel pickup point here, and I'll just put a 90 on it, and out she comes. This I've got to put an extender tube on it, and that, uh, so, because I'm gonna be cutting a hole at the bottom of my airplane, um, and I'll show you what, how that goes. Uh, I'm gonna glue a, a very thin piece of aluminum onto the, onto the cloth, to give it some stiffness with a hole in it, and then I'll just cut the hole out. So it'll, you know, it'll be like an, like an ins inspection hole, but it's gonna be always open. And uh, so this will protrude out the bottom of the aircraft all the time, just a little bit. And that's the sump point. Um, that's, of course, I'm uh, for the uh, uh, fuel level pickup. Uh, you need the 18 inch long one if you're using the capacitive probe, by the way. So he sells them with it. Um, I chose not to order it with them. I should have, because <laughs> it took a long time to get it. Uh, and uh, my fill hole is over here on the side, which is on the left or the um, um, uh, um, uh, port side of the, uh, of the aircraft. However, my fill point is on the right hand side, the starboard side. And the reason for that is because the hose kind of goes like that. Now, I'm going to be cutting it shorter, bringing it down, um, and, and it's going to fit into the fill port and then into this over here. There's a fitting that screws in that this goes on. So you, you cut this to customize fit. Uh, when, wherever you put the fill port on the side. If the fill port were on the uh, left-hand side or the port side, he would have put this on the opposite to account for this hose. So, uh, make sure you specify which side you're going to be filling with when, if you're going to be buying one of these. Uh, I'll put a link down here um, to, uh, who, to who I bought it from. It's very well made. It's all aluminum welded, um, nicely done. Um, fits with no, no room to spare. Uh, it fits um, like a glove, uh, the old saying. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the one specialty tool you do need or should have is um, this um, right angle drill bit. Now I've got the number 30 bit on here because I'm using um, uh, the rivets for the number 30 hole and um, uh, yeah this without this I don't think I could have drilled the holes okay I'll make this quick before my battery dies because it already died on me um, yep closing out fuel tank has been fitted uh, I need uh, little fittings that kind of stuff and soon that will be done and it's getting really close to time to put the wings on the airplane. So, uh, thanks for showing up and, uh, and following along in my madness. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, 
and send me donuts. So, I think. No, don't send me donuts. I'm on a diet. It's just a joke. Send me meat. Meat is good. I'm eating a lot of meat. You can probably figure out why. Anyways, take care. God bless. Keep your stick on the ice. Yes, thank you very much. Like and subscribe uh, and comment. Uh, <laughs> I'm a small channel. I read every comment and I do respond to all questions. Thanks for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Bye-bye.